In this video we're going to take a look at uh, doing some formulas in Excel and using some of the basic arithmetic functions. Uh, what I've got here is a simple spreadsheet that has some budget data for three months on it. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some calculations with this budget. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to sum these numbers. I've got two choices. I could put equals B2 plus B3 plus B4. Or I can go over here and I can use the auto sum button and choose the sum function. And when that happens, um, it tries to sum the numbers that are closest. And these are the three numbers. And it highlights them and puts a dancing line around them and uh, makes that the range B2 colon B4. And um, after you verify that it's really adding the numbers that you want it to add, you can just hit the enter key. Okay. Now, uh, once I've got a formula there, uh, this for if you double click on the formula, uh, it will show you the terms that are used in the formula. Okay, um, And the way Excel actually interprets this formula is like this. Uh, it's not really B2 to B4. What it is, is it is three cells above is the starting cell, and one cell above is the ending cell, and everything in between. Uh, so it's all relative to the formula. Uh, to the cell that the formula is in. And to verify this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this formula to the clipboard. And I'm going to go over here and just randomly pick a cell and I'm going to paste it in. Okay. And let's take a look at the formula. The sum from I10 to I12. Where, where's I10 to I12? If I double click on this, there they are. Three cells that are right above. So even though the formula that I started out with said B2 to B4, when I copied it, it became I10 to I12. And the reason is because those are considered relative references. They're relative to the cell that the formula was in. Now, if I copy that again and just pick another random cell here and uh, do a paste, get another 0. And if I double click, it's D14 to D16. And I'm in D17 right now. And those are the three cells right above. So formulas in Excel, I'm going to delete this, hit the delete key, click on this, hit the delete key. Formulas in Excel are computed relative to the cell that the formula is in. So what that means is that I can take this formula and get my fill handle and drag it all the way across to these other two cells. And when I go to this one, it is the sum from C2 to C4. I'm in column C. And when I go to this column, it's the sum from D2 to D4 because I'm in column D. So it does exactly what you would want it to do in a situation like this. It sums this column, and then it sums this column, and then it sums this column. Uh, now, another way to do that, I'm going to drag the mouse over all three of those and delete them. Another way to do that is to select all three cells and go to your auto sum button. And actually, if you're doing the sum function, you don't need to hit the down arrow. You just click on auto sum. And what it does is it puts a sum in for here, a sum for here, and a sum for here. So those are two ways to get to that answer. OK. Uh, let's take a look at column E. This is labeled total. I want to know how much I spent on each category each month. Uh, let's actually do that the shortcut way. Let's select all of those and click on Auto Sum. And uh, always, you always want to verify. Double click and make sure it really is summing the numbers that you want it to sum. So I'm just double clicking on each one of these, and each one of them gets a blue box around the three cells that are to the left. OK, now I want to know what the highest amount that I spent on each category was uh, over that three-month period. Well, that's going to be the max function. OK, and we know the max function is up here. Click on that. And now this is an example of where Excel is guessing wrong. Uh, it selects all of the numbers that are next to it, uh, which is normally what you'd want it to do. But I don't want this total to be included. Otherwise, that's always going to be uh, the maximum number. And that's not what I'm looking for. So to fix that, just take your mouse and drag it over the cells that you want. The cell range changes to B2 to D2. It doesn't go to E2 anymore. And I can hit the Enter key. And it will copy down. And again, just double click on the cells. And it'll draw a blue box around the ones that it's summing for you. And everything looks good. Now, in this column, I want to know what the lowest amount was that I spent every month. And uh, that's going to be the min function. So let's go here. And again, now it's trying to add in these two. And we don't want either one of those. So select those three. You can just hit the Enter key and 
click and get your fill handle and drag it all the way down and it tells me what the lowest was for each one of those months. Um, also I know what the average was that I paid for each month and that's going to be the average function and it's trying to do all of them I just want these three take your mouse and drag it over those three and hit the enter key and take this and drag it down and we've got averages for everything now and uh, we're not going to do the percent uh, this time we'll do that in the next video um, but what I do want to do is I want to make this look a little bit nicer here uh, so let's select all of these and the easy way to do it is use your cell styles and I want those to be heading 3 I'll put a line under make them blue I want these to be heading 4 which is the same as heading 3 but without the line underneath uh, I want these to be right aligned so they're closer to the data that they're describing. I want these to be right aligned so that they're over the numbers instead of having the numbers on the right and these on the left. Um, I want all of these to be formatted um, with, actually let's do the middle ones here again. I want the middle ones to be formatted with a comma and zero decimal places and then I want the first row and the last row here to be formatted with a dollar sign and zero decimal places and that's what I get now let's take the bottom row here and this is a totals row and let's go to our cell styles up here and use the total style for that and again it changes it back to Calibri which doesn't look all that different from Verdana it's a little bit smaller uh, this is 11 Calibri and still looks a little smaller than 10 point uh, oh. I did not change these to Verdana. That was the other spreadsheet. Um, yeah, it's a little different from Verdana. Uh, Verdana is just a little bit bigger, but otherwise the font looks pretty much the same. Uh, and it makes the totals bold. Uh, so everything looks pretty good here. Let's do one more thing. Let's go over here and right click and let's insert a row. And let's just put a heading up here and let's take that and uh, drag it all the way across here and let's do a merge and center and that doesn't look quite right that should be bigger we'll make that a title and uh, there we go um, did some basic formulas using the built-in simple math functions that are available here on the home tab